students. I'm Professor Manmeet Kaur. I'm from EC Department, Sagar Institute of Research and Technology College. Today I'll be taking lecture on subject digital communication. The topic of my lecture is binary phase shift keying system. In this lecture, I'll be discussing about the spectrum of the BPSK system. Now, what is BPSK system? In my previous lecture, I have already discussed about binary phase shift keying system. In binary phase shift keying system, binary symbols one and zero modulates the phase of the carrier. That means the phase of the carrier varies according to the amplitude of the binary message. That is, when message symbol is one, the, the carrier signal is given by A cos 2 pi F naught T, where A is the amplitude of the carrier signal and F naught is the frequency of the carrier signal. Whereas when the message signal becomes zero, there is a phase shift of 180 degree in the carrier signal. That means the carrier signal will be represented as a new modulated signal, which is A cos 2 pi F naught T plus pi, which will be given as minus A cos 2 pi F naught T. Here, A is the peak value of the sinusoidal carrier. So when it is represented in terms of the power of the signal, it is given as power is A square by 2 or A is written as root 2P. So in this equation, I can write A as root 2P when P is the power of the signal. So here we can see when symbol is 1, the modulated signal is represented by S1T, which is given by root 2P cos 2 pi F naught T. Whereas when the symbol is 0, the modulated signal is represented by S2T. So there is a phase shift of 180 degrees. So as we know, cos theta plus pi is given as minus cos theta. So S2T will be given as minus root 2P cos 2 pi F naught T. So in general form, I can write my modulated signal as Bt root 2P cos 2 pi F naught T, where Bt is plus 1 when binary 1 is transmitted and Bt is minus 1 when binary 0 is transmitted. That means Bt is the bipolar version of the sig message signal, which is Dt, which is the unipolar version, which is represented only in the form of 1 and 0. Now here we can see binary phase shifting waveforms. So this is the binary sequence, which is unipolar version. That means it is represented as 1 and 0, whereas when it is Give, when it is changed to NRZ bipolar signal, Bt, plus 1 is re represented as plus 1, whereas 0 is represented as minus 1. So here we can see whenever there is a change in the polarity of the message signal, there is a phase shift of 180 degrees. So this is my carrier signal, which is given as the BPSK signal and represented by phase shift at every transition of the message signal. Now, coming to the spectrum of the PPSK signal. Now, first we will find out the Fourier transform of the basic message signal, which is represented as NRZ pulse. Here, one is represented by positive voltage Vb, and zero is represented by negative voltage minus Vb. Now, one is represented by a positive pulse of with Tb. So here we have represented a positive pulse as, uh, as symmetric about y-axis and this point is minus Tb by 2 and this is plus Tb by 2. Now this is a gate pulse whose width is Tb and its, its amplitude is Vb. So when we will find out the Fourier transform of this gate pulse, the Fourier transform of the gate pulse is given by Vb Tb sine pi F Tb upon pi F Tb, where Tb is the width of the gate pulse, Vb is the amplitude of the 
gate pulse and TB is, a, which I have already told, is the width of the gate pulse. Now, to find the spectrum of the VPSK signal, I need to find power spectral density of this pulse. Now, the power spectral density SF is given by as the square of the Fourier transform of the pulse divided by TS. TS is the duration of one symbol. Now, I have already calculated XF in my previous slide. So, I'll substitute the value of XF here. So, the PSD SF will be given as VB square TB sine pi F TB whole square upon pi F TB. Now, here, when I'll divide it by TS, since it is BPSK signal here, the symbol duration and bit duration are both equal. So TS and TB will be same. So one TB will get cancelled by TB in the denominator. So here we will get only TB. Now, when I will draw the spectrum of the BPSK signal, I, I'll have to plot this power spectral density. Now, here I can see the power spectral density is given as the square of this function, which is also known as sink function. The sink function is a decaying sinusoidal signal. But when I take square of it, I will get only positive portion of the decaying sinusoidal person, uh, pulse because here, the when I will get the square of the signal, the negative portion also becomes positive. So here I can see this is the power spectral density of the NRZ signal. The first zero crossing is given by FB. Second zero crossing is 2FB. And the maximum amplitude is given by PTB. Now, this is the, the spectrum which I had shown here is the spectrum of the basic NRZ pulse. Now, I want to generate BPSK signal, which is the modulated signal. This signal is generated when I will multiply this basic NRZ pulse with carrier signal, which is cos omega CT. Cos omega CT is given as e to the power j omega CT plus e to the power minus j omega CT divided by 2. So, when my basic NRZ pulse is multiplied by the exponential function, then according to the frequency translation theorem, the spectrum of the signal will be shifted by the frequency which is given in the exponential function. So the basic power spectral density was VB square TB and into square of the sink function. But when I multiply it with EJ omega naught T, I'll get the shifted signal where the signal is shifted on positive frequency F naught and minus F and negative frequency minus F naught, where F naught is the frequency of the carrier signal. So this will be the power spectral density of the modulated signal, which is BPSK signal. So here I can see from this equation that the spectrum of the basic NRZ pulse will be shifted at F0 and minus F0. So this will be the spectrum of the BPSK signal. So here I can see the spectrum of the basic NRZ pulse was shown here. Now when I multiply it with sinusoidal carrier, I'll get shifted version of this spectrum at F0 and at minus F0. Now, this is the spectrum of the BPSK signal. Now, if I want to find out the bandwidth of the BPSK signal, I'll consider the main lobe because the area under the main lobe is maximum. That is, the power contained in the main lobe is maximum as compared to the side lobes. So, for bandwidth, I will consider this frequency range from minus F0 minus FB to F0 plus FB. So, this width will be 2FB. So, the bandwidth will be given as the highest frequency, 
minus lowest frequency in the main lobe, which is highest frequency is given by F0 plus FB, whereas lowest frequency is given as F0 minus FB. So bandwidth will be 2FB. So here I, I have is so here we can see that the bandwidth of the BPSK signal is equal to twice of the highest frequency contained in the baseband signal. <clears throat> now we will see the geometric representation of the BPSK signal. Now we have already discussed that the BPSK signal is given by the equation Bt root 2p cos 2 pi f naught t. So we will <coughs> multiply and divide with root tb. So bt root ptb into root 2 upon tb cos 2 pi f naught t. Now this part root 2 upon tb cos 2 pi f naught t, I'll, I'll represent it with phi, phi 1t, which is orthonormal carrier signal. So here I'll write bt root p into tb power into time is represented by energy. So I'll write it as root eb. And this I have represented with orthonormal carrier signal phi 1t. So I'll get the modulated signal as st bt root eb phi 1t. So here st bt root eb phi 1t. Now we have already discussed Bt is the NRZ signal which is having value plus one or minus one. So instead of Bt, we have written plus root Tb phi 1t when message is one and when message is zero, it is given by minus root Tb phi 1t. Now to find out the geometrical representation of the BPSK signal, we will represent in the signal space. So this is say origin. Now for signal 1, it is root EB phi 1t. Now phi 1t is the vector which is say in this right hand side direction. So first when the message signal is 1, ST will be plus root EB phi 1t. That means we will have to go distance of root EB in the direction of phi 1t. So say so this is the direction of phi 1t, we will move for a distance of root EB. So this will represent the symbol 1. Similarly, when the message is 0, st is minus root eb phi 1t. That means we will move in the opposite direction of phi 1t and the length will be root eb. So this will be the symbol 0. Now, if I want to find out the distance between the two symbols 1 and 0, it will root eb is from 0 to this point and 0 to this point is again root eb. So total distance will be twice root eb. So here we'll see that the distance between the two symbols is 2 root EB. Now here when the distance D increases, the isolation between the two symbols in BPSK signal will also increase. And so in that case, the probability of error will reduce because the possibility of the overlapping of two signals will also reduce. Now this is all for today's lecture. Thank you.